The Parable of the Candied Apple, IHOP Revisited In 2010, the Holy Spirit led me to do a video on IHOP, the International House of Prayer in Kansas City, Kansas, and its founder, Mike Bickle. The name of that video is The Parable of the Candied Apple, or What is the Doctrine Behind IHOP? The quality of the first video is not so great, uh, so for that I apologize, but the audio is understandable. I will post the link to it below this video, because I want you to see that even back in 2010, the Holy Spirit was warning Christians about IHOP. First of all, Bickle was a speaker at the Kairos conference this week in Kansas City, which was another confirmation of what the Holy Spirit warned us of seven years ago. It was a yoking of religions to unite Christians with the Roman Catholic Church. You will find several videos on YouTube that give more details of this unholy yoking called the Kairos Conference. It was heavily promoted by Kenneth Copeland, which was no surprise, considering this famous gathering from several years ago. Just for your information, the word kairos is an ancient Greek word meaning the right or opportune moment. One thing is for certain, these men and women are opportunists of the most foul kind. I happened upon a video from the Jim Baker show the other day where he was speaking with Mike Bickle. You can also listen to that video on YouTube. I shall post the link to it below. It was the content of that video that prompted this one. The thing that caught my attention about Mike Bickle during his interview with Jim Baker was the fact that in spite of his great ability to tell a story, his mouth betrayed further truth about IHOP. This is the man who for almost two decades has been leading prayer 24 hours a day. I think it's something like 16,000 people have been on the teams full time it, praying. Really? Is that right? Well, it'd be 16,000 staff, students, or interns. Like, yeah. Full time, yes. Full yeah. Time. In the 18 years we've been doing it. It's 16, really, 000. really incredible. And not stopping. You have to understand. Not stopping. People don't get that. They say, oh, yeah, oh, you're praying all the time. No, they're praying all the time. But it's the worship teams that never stop. I mean, the people in the congregation, that's easy. It's right. the worship team where the labor is. So I'm going to ask us one last thing. What do you think about the prayer room? Do you like being in there? Yeah. Like, what do you like the most? Is it the music or when Grandpa pre prays or more the music? Well, it's the love of Jesus. <laughs> it's the love of Jesus. Yeah. Note how Bickle asks his grandson if the child likes the music more or when he, his grandpa, prays. This, saints, is a spirit of pride in the man. Bickle is not a humble servant of Jesus Christ. Worship is not intended to be a labor, something that becomes an orchestrated thing to set the mood for forced prayer. We do not get God's attention by our sacrifices, no matter how noble it may seem, but rather by our obedience to his word. The thing is, Mike Bickle does not lead the 24-7 prayer himself, nor does he lead the continuous worship. Yet he obviously, as demonstrated here, gets the credit and praise for the work of others. As I listened to Bickle, the following scriptures came to my mind. As it is written, For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uttermost rooms at feasts, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not ye called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, 
and all ye are brethren. Bickle has stated that his IHOP ministry was raised up to cry out for Jesus to come. And before Jesus comes in response to the cry worldwide, there is going to be a revival. This is pure fiction from the mind of an apostate man, from a man who has enslaved souls to do his will, motivated by his vision in accordance with his man-made doctrine. No man of God who knew Jesus Christ would ever lead people toward unity with the Roman Catholic Church. I shall post a link below to another good video on IHOP where you can hear Bickle state his mission and his truth, where you can hear him state what I shared with you. Saints, do not be taken in by Jim Baker, Mike Bickle, or the poor exploited young child. These men are extremely crafty. They know how to gain a following, for they both boast many followers. It is written, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. If you listen to the whole video on YouTube, you will hear the mother of Mike Bickle's grandson state the following. Now this would trouble me. Let's ask his mom. Okay. What life is like with this boy. Yes. You know, he's, uh, he's, he kind of has two personalities. He two personalities. Hmm. She goes on to explain further, and it all seems rather harmless. But Jesus did not have two personalities. The average born-again child of God does not have two personalities. There is nothing harmless about IHOP or Mike Bickle. Although Mike Bickle and the late Bob Jones weave a wonderful tale of how IHOP came to be, they are no less devils sent to deceive and place young people into spiritual bondage. The kundalini spirit is at work in IHOP, just as it was in John Arnott's Toronto, Todd Bentley's Lakeland, and as it is at Rick Joyner's church. Mike Bickle long ago accepted and took on the kundalini spirit. For those at IHOP, it is all about feelings and experience, and the evil kundalini spirit provides that for them. The late Bob Jones was also, along with Rick Joyner, the one who prayed over the adulterer Todd Bentley and his new wife Jessa after he divorced his first wife mid-revival at Lakeland. None of these men are godly men by any stretch of one's imagination. Besides the fact that Mike Bickle is just plain creepy, there is more than meets the eye that goes on at IHOP. It is a cult. It is a place of spiritual oppression. It is a place where Satan takes souls captive. There are testimonies out there on the internet of people whom the Lord Jesus has delivered out of that place of demonic oppression. I shall post a link to one of them below this video. These people like Bickle and his associates are diabolically evil. They brand all those who come against them in any way as having a demon or being of a religious spirit when it is they who possess both a demon and a religious spirit as did the Pharisees. Obviously, Bickle and those like him, such as Kenneth Copeland, do not grasp the fact that Jesus Christ does not approve of their supporting one like the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church, nor of them exalting themselves above their brethren. As it is written, and call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven,
Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. We are to bow down to neither angels nor men. No true man or woman of God would yoke themselves with the Roman Catholic Church. I don't care how much the person prays or how many good works they seem to do. The person who does that is not a man or woman of God. Now apparently these men don't care what is written. They are often heard to speak of certain ones as being their spiritual fathers. Apparently, neither do they care that popes allow themselves to be called the Holy Father. As it is written, but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Mike Bickle and all his associates are conspiring together with the Church of Rome to deceive the sheep and ultimately lead them all to hell. It is written, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offences, contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Mark these people and have no fellowship with them, for they are deceivers. Saints, I ask you to please pray for the Lord to bring down Mike Bickle and IHOP and set the young people free who are in religious bondage to the will of the man Mike Bickle and his co-conspirators.